Archive pages are an integral part of creating any WordPress website, and something you really need to know about in order to have a properly structured site that Google will be happy indexing and give you great SEO. Basically, in WordPress, every post type and every taxonomy automatically gets its own internal indexing. It's part of the way WordPress knows where everything is. Another word for index is archive. So, in a generic, vanilla WordPress site, there'll be an index of all posts. But WordPress also has a built in way to display these archives on a page. Traditionally, it's a rather generic listing out of just the title and an excerpt of text from each article. Or, if we created a custom post type, let's say Jim's, this internal index archive exists as well. And also, let's say you had some categories, also known as taxonomies. These also live internally as an index archive. Now, you may be asking, so what? Why does this help me? When would I use a view, and when would I use an archive page? Let's first start by building an archive page, so you know how to do it, and what it looks like, and then we'll discuss when to use it. I'll create a brand new post type, just to show you the start of the process. Maybe we want to add tutorials to our website, so I'll make a new post type called Tutorials. I'll go to Toolset, Post Types, Add New, Plural Name Tutorials, Singular Tutorial, and the slug is Tutorial, and save it. Now I'll go over to the Toolset dashboard. As we look down the list, we spot our new post type. You see from this dashboard that we can add custom fields, taxonomies, and more. Over here on the right, let's press the button labeled Create Archive. We get a pop-up that allows us to name this archive. That's just an internal name and won't show up on the page itself, so we'll just leave it as is. We're also asked if we want to display all items or create a front-end search for our users. Again, we'll just use the default option and click Create. Here, we're greeted with a page that looks almost identical to when we create a view. It's asking us to add blocks to a WordPress archive loop. Let's add a block. We'll make it a toolset heading block to show a title, making it dynamic and pulling a source from the title. And from there, we'll just keep adding blocks of any kind we want to show whatever we want, just like creating any type of view. I'm not going to build it all out here. Watch the tutorials on views and other lessons for that. But let's take a peek at a finished archive build out. We'll pop over to the one already created for the gym post type and see what it looks like. We see there's a template built out here. Looking at the navigator, we see that everything was put into a container. This was to style in some padding. And then there's an image first, then the dynamic heading for our title, and star ratings, excerpt text, taxonomies, and the learn more button. So basically, you build out the archive the same way you'd make any view. Also note that if we choose WordPress Archive in the navigator, we can still add in searching using this button in our general settings. And if we choose WordPress Archive Loop, we can change our loop style, and below that, our grid settings. Again, pretty much anything you can do with a view, you can do here. Looking at the results, let's pop over to the front of the site and see what it looks like. We'll go to a page that's websitename.com slash Jim. That's because all the WordPress archive pages use the slug name. I'll show you. If we go to Toolset, Post Types, Jims, we see that the slug name is Jim. So that's what the page name will be in the archives URL. Although the displayed title, which you'll see in a moment, comes from this plural name. Okay, so on our Jim archive page, we see a nicely styled list of all of our Jim posts. And we see it's labeled automatically by WordPress as archives colon Jim. Let's change that. If you're using a theme that's integrated with toolset, such as Astra, or in this case, Generate Press, then all you need to do is navigate to our WordPress archive, 
and at the bottom we see our theme options. Opening this up, we have a long list of things we can change, such as widths and alignments of the various elements. Scrolling down to the bottom, we can disable our title. Done. Okay, now let's add in our own title. Notice that at the bottom of our page, there's an option to add other blocks. This will add blocks outside of our loop, meaning that even if there's pagination, anything we add in here will remain on the page below the list of posts. Similarly, if we go to the top of the page, we can also add other blocks above our main loop. Let's do that now. Add blocks. We'll make it a heading block. And we'll just write in what we want as our static heading. I'll just type in Jim's. And I'm going to add in a bunch of styling to this title. This is all optional and just artistic choice. We'll make it an H1. I'll center it. Under typography, I'll make the font size a nice large 60 pixels and make it green. And under style settings, I'll make the bottom margin 50 pixels just to add some space before we see the posts. Looking at this on the front end, we see our customized heading. Okay, now that you know the basics of creating an archive page, you might be wondering why you don't just use a view instead. It's a subtle answer. Mainly, it's built in. WordPress creates archives for all post types and taxonomies automatically. You cannot prevent or disable this. It's just how it works from WordPress. So, if you built a page with a view instead of a built-in archive, you'll end up with two archives visible to Google. If you want to use only your custom page, you'd have to prevent indexing of your archive pages through some kind of SEO plugin. Since a view can be placed on any page in any way you want, breadcrumbs might also break if we don't follow proper structural rules. Archives have the advantage that they're built directly by WordPress, so they're always structured perfectly. Toolset is just improving on their look and range of what they can show. Another example of a good reason to create archive pages. In this gym website, if I click on any of these tags, let's say dance, I'm jumped to an archive page of all articles tagged with dance. As a programmer, you only had to build one archive template and apply to all post types and taxonomies, and the rest will be taken care of for you automatically. Okay, so here's a summary in a nutshell. Use a toolset view when you want to display lists and searches of anything anywhere in your site. But if you need a basic listing out and want it to be placed where SEO is expecting to see it, then use an archive.